Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi serial port programming. Node Red will be used on Raspberry Pi 4 to communicate Modbus RTU to a solo process temperature controller and Click PLC using Twisted Pair RS485. This will be done on the same serial network so the devices will be daisy chained together on the two wires. We will be reading the present value or PV value and set value or SV value of the solo temperature controller and then writing these values into the Click PLC. A set value will then be read from the Click PLC and if it is changed, the value will be written into the set value of the solo controller. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we'll do is look at the network that we are setting up. And this is an important step to ensure that the addresses and unit IDs are set so there's no duplication. It will be also, we also want to ensure that communication parameters are known to everyone who will be working with this network. And a review of the Modbus RTU protocol can be seen at the addresses in the, in the description below. So we have um, our Modbus RTU, which is a 485 serial network here. And our device, a Raspberry Pi serial port on the USB will be the master. So that means that this will initiate all communications to the slaves. So the slaves will not do anything except for respond to the master's um, communication. Now a master can also be referred to as a client and um, a slave on the network can be referred to as a server. So Keep the two S's, slave and server, and then um, are they the same as client and master. So our first one, our Raspberry Pi, will be the master. And the baud rate, parity, um, stop bits, and start data bits all have to be matched each one of the um, devices. So that they are, since they're all in the same network, they all must communicate the same uh, parameters. So our solo, we're going to set this up for unit number one, 9600, eight, even one. And our click three port will be our, um, on the click PLC, the slave port number three will be our S45, which is going to be node number two. And again, 9600, eight, even one. And then any additional um, slaves or servers that we're going to add to this network, they will have to also have the same uh, parameters. So once we have that set up, then what we'll do is take a look at the actual Raspberry Pi and where the USB plugs in, you will see that if we look under, under the device folder, you will see a, a TTY USB zero. And this will actually show you or give you the name of that uh, serial port that we're going to be programming. So. And then we will actually look at our hardware that we have here. And our hardware, there we go. We have our Raspberry Pi right here. And then we also have our um, USB device and it's communicating um, RS-45 over to our solo process temperature controller. Then Daisy chained out of that to our click PLC. So that is our setup. And so the next thing we'll do is take a look at our uh, solo process temperature controller. And if we hit the setup button, we will go to our communications, which is right here, which is set to on. Then we have our Modbus RTU set. We have unit number one, which is what we wanted. 9600, eight, even, and one stop bit. So that is our setup for our solo. And we can see that that is actually the same as what we have right here that we wanted originally in our chart. So once we have the solo, we'll take a look now at the click PLC. 
and under the Click PLC, we'll go to Setup, then Comport, and under Comport, we'll go to port number three, which is RS-45. And you can see here, there's my uh, 45 communication. We have node address number two, which is the same as what we wanted, 9600, even 18. So that is our setup. And what you'll notice also on our um, PLC program is we have a simple timer, self-resetting, and that goes um, that goes from zero to 9,999, and it's being put into DS number two. So DS number one contains our solo set value change register, and our DS number two is our click timer value. So our DS uh, 10 is our solo present value, and DS 11 is solo set value. And if we wanted to look at the address picker, the address picker will actually show us the uh, Modbus addresses for those locations. We turn this on here, and you can see here that we have uh, number one and two, and 10 and 11. So that is our Modbus addresses that we need to uh, communicate to. Okay. Then once we have that, what we'll do is take a look at our uh, Node Red program. So let's uh, call that up now. And here is our Node Red program. So it looks complicated, but really isn't. What we'll do is we use, first of all, the catch-all. And the catch-all says if, either, if there's any errors on any of these nodes, it will actually start the function all over again. Then we have a timestamp. What the timestamp will do is it will inject uh, once after one second. So this happens when you deploy or you modify this program itself. So it actually initializes the, the whole program to operate and then it proceeds. Next, what we'll do is, so after we've done that, then the first thing we'll do is read the set value from our click PLC. In fact, what we're gonna do is we use a function node in front of the Modbus Flex getter. And that function node calls up a function code three, which is a multiple read registers from the Modbus. Unit ID is number two, which is our click and our address zero. Now the Modbus address we said was one, but because of the Modbus addresses are offset by one, we start with zero. And we read quantity two, so that'll give us DS1 and DS2. And then we return our message. Once we do that function, we go into our Modbus Flex Getter. And when we do, here's our Modbus Flex Getter. We set up our server, which is the same as our slave. We look at the parameters here, and you can see that we're uh, we called it Modbus RTU. It's a, a serial type. Our serial port, again, points to the same folder that we saw before in our Raspberry Pi device folder. The serial type is our RTU buffered. Our baud rate, data bits, stop bits, and parity, again, must match our network that we've set up. And then we have our timeouts and reconnections. Then under our options, we select our show activities and show errors. So that is our setup for our Modbus Flex Getter. And then we put on a Modbus response. So you can see here as my timer increases, we're actually uh, reading that and bringing it in. And our activity is right here on our Modbus Flex Getter. You can see here that it's queuing and it's active. And that's all coming from our function code. Next, what we do is after we get their value, we go into our switch. And on our switch, what you'll see is that we either um, say that if our global set value is the same as our payload, then um, we activate number two. And if it's not equal, then we activate number one. And if number one, then we're going to write uh, the click set, set value to the solo process temperature controller. In order to do that, again, we use a function code so the first thing we do is set up a global click uh, set value variable based on the payload because it was different now. And then we use function code six, which is a write register. Unit ID is one, which is our solo. And then our address is 4097, which is the Modbus address to write that value. And then we want to write one. 
then we use our write and we show activities and errors onto the same server uh, parameters that we have here for our network. Then here is our Modbus response. And then we do a message payload. Then we go into and then we read our, our solo uh, set value and present value from the temperature controller. So off the switch or after we've done this, we read those values. And again, we set all that up and then we write those values into our click using the same parameters. The only difference would be the unit ID that we're actually going to. Then after a delay of 0.2 seconds, we go back to the beginning and start all over again. So that is basically our program. So if we were to um, take a look, we can look at the, our information here. We'll just clear all those error messages out. And if we look back at our click programming software, we can call up our, our, our solo uh, Modbus processor here and our data view. There we go. In our data view, what we'll do is now change the value here to a new value and we'll change it to uh, 20, uh, 21.5. You'll see that the decimal place is already understood. We'll write that value and automatically what you'll see is that it automatically puts it into our uh, program. And here you can see here's our message payload after our write and there's my address and there's the value we just put in. So very easy to implement this uh, uh, Modbus in our application. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.